Hello there guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Matt and today I'm going to be showing you how to make an integrated sink drainer into a concrete worktop and this is going to be the best way to make a custom sized one because you can get pre-bought wedges that you just insert into the mold. But if you've got a specific size sink width that you want and a specific gradient you want then this is the best video for you. So keep watching and I'll show you guys how to make it. So what I'm doing is I'm using a router and I put a little a jig across the top of here, glued it in place so that it stays flat against here and made sure I got a nice flat piece of plywood. Then I've drawn a line, you can see all the way here, up to the point where it's gonna stop is this line here. And what I'm doing is I'm just routing across and dropping the router bit to be level with this pencil line here and then going across cutting it every time. So I'm just speeding this process up so you can see how it works. I'm trying to do as evenly as possible one strip at a time. So there you can see most of the work is done. The finishing line is here and you can see very close to this line that I've drawn along the edge. And we're gonna have a 25 mil radius along these edges. So I'm gonna cut them out afterwards. And then there's gonna be a sink cut out on top here. I found that the best way to do it is use a polisher, some 120 grit sandpaper. So the aim here is just to flatten off all of those steps in the wood. So one of the reasons why I use plywood instead of MDF is because it's got layers in it. So you can check where you are in the height of the wood as you're going through it. Then just mix up some car body filler with a spatula and spread a very thin layer over the surface to try and fill any lumps and bumps and make it as smooth as possible. Once that's all cured, you can just sand it all back flat with a polisher or an orbital sander and just finish it on 120 grit. I'm then just using a jigsaw and a sander to round the edges to 25 millimeters in radius. And then I'm gonna sand all of the side pieces to make sure they're as smooth as possible so that when it's demolded, it doesn't come out too rough. I'm now using this Plastico-Quick Quick Dry Gloss Lacquer, which only needs 15 minutes in between each coat, so you can apply it really quickly. And then you can see here, I'm just applying it to all the surfaces that are in direct contact with the concrete. It gives a really slippery finish, which makes it easy to release from the cured concrete. So I highly recommend it. And I've put a link in the description for that product, along with every other product used in this video. Then you need to measure and cut out the sink and hob cutouts for the worktops. And the sink cutout needs to have the sides rounded to 25 millimeters using a sanding block. I didn't manage to get this on video, but you can use the plywood base as a guide. You can then use a hole saw and a drill to drill out some pieces to make the knockout for the tap hole that you're going to have on the worktop as well. Then it's time to make the base pieces of the moulds, which is going to be the container that the concrete will sit in when you pour it. And then I like to stick the side pieces on afterwards because then you know that when you flip the concrete worktop over, the top side will be accurate to the bases that you cut out originally. We've also got a couple of 300 millimeter radiuses on some of the base pieces of the worktops, and I'm just showing you how to do that now. You just need to mark out an indentation that is 300 millimeters in from each edge, and then make a cardboard jig that has two holes in it that are 300 millimeters apart, and then you can easily mark out these rounded edges with a pencil. Then just simply cut them out with a jigsaw. Now it's time to cut all of the side pieces and I'm using 58 millimeters in width here because I want it to extend 40 millimeters above the base piece and I've got 18 millimeter thick melamine board. You can see now I've started sticking on these side pieces with solid melamine board and for these curved edges I'm using this three millimeter white face hardboard which actually has a nice waterproof coating. So what I'm going to be doing is wrapping this around the edge and then backing it with some more solid melamine board. I've marked out 40 millimeters in height. I'm gonna use a glue gun and stick this on. Glue on this edge and then stick it on. Make sure it's the same height as this edge here. I'm gonna go in here. Then using some 50 millimeter sellotape, wrap around the tap knockout and check that the diameter is correct. So then wrap around the sink and hob cutouts to make sure that all the surfaces are smooth. Then you can use some grab adhesive to stick down the sink and hob cutouts and the tap cutout can be stuck down with some hot glue because it just has a little bit less surface area and needs that instant grip. So I also use just a bit of hot glue to make sure this edge was stuck down. Then go around all of the internal edges or any edge that you really want to round off with a bead of neutral cure silicon and then you can round them off with the back of a drill bit. Once the silicon is cured, you can then remove the excess with a blade. I'm then polishing all of the moulds with a thin layer of cooking oil as mould release before mixing up the concrete. 
I'm mixing up 40 Newton bags of high strength concrete with 0.5% plasticizer and just adding in enough water to make the mixture sloppy without any water pooling on top of the surface. This would be around the same as 4000 PSI concrete if you're from America. Once you've filled the moulds to about three quarters of the way full, you can then bounce them up and down onto the surface and vibrate the concrete inside them. You can then add steel reinforcement to strengthen any thin sections. I didn't need to reinforce behind the sink drainer because I was using a high strength concrete mix. You can then use an SDS drill on hammer mode to vibrate the edges further and then make sure that all of the moulds are flat and level. Then leave the concrete to cure for two to three days and keep them hydrated. Then using a good quality machine polisher and a 50 grit stone polishing pad, you can flatten off the backs of all of the worktops. You can find a link to both of these products in the description below. You can then remove the foam inserts and flip the worktops over. Then you can remove that sink form and you can see here how well that's come out. The definition in the shape is really good and it released really easily from the concrete. So you can see here that I'm just using a 200 grit stone polishing pad and the machine polisher and just lubricating the surface and going over all the surfaces left and right once. I'm just trying to get rid of all of the inconsistencies in the surface. Sometimes you get light spots on the concrete and you want to give it a good key for the epoxy to stick to afterwards. I'm just brooming it down here to get rid of any mud or dirt that's sticking to the surface so I can see the final finish and just polishing some of the difficult to get to areas with some 120 grit wet and dry paper. So I've now given this one a really good sanding with 120 grit sandpaper. You can see we've got some nice smooth lines running through the worktop and um, not very many holes at all. I'm not going to show you those two because it's just laborious watching sanding. Then you just want to make a cement slurry which is just a mixture of cement and water and make a paste out of it and then rub it into the surface and try to fill any holes that might be left over. Then allow it to cure overnight and give it a quick sanding and wipe down to get rid of any excess dust. Then get a long spirit level and some shims to level the surface ready for pouring the epoxy. So I'm using this glass cast 3 which is basically a UV stable self leveling and self degassing epoxy and basically what that means is when you stir it up and you get all those bubbles in there when you mix it once you've poured it down on the surface and spread it around with a tile adhesive spreader the bubbles will slowly rise up to the surface and pop because it's got an ingredient in the mixture which basically forces the air out of the surface. It's got a 16 hour cure time so there's plenty of time for all those bubbles to escape and when it's finished it really does look good. You get a crystal clear completely flat surface and if you'd like to give it a go for yourself then I've put a link in the description for this product and every other product used in this video so you can find a full shopping list in the description below. So after pouring the epoxy over the top of the surfaces I basically go around the edges with a paintbrush to help the epoxy spill over the edges and create a completely smooth surface on all of the sides. Now starting to cure you can see the shine on the surface already. So as the epoxy cures you can see those slight micro bubbles there on the surface they will all disappear from the surface and it will come out completely smooth so this is pretty much what the final finish will look like. So if you found this video helpful, then it really would mean a lot to me if you'd consider liking and subscribing to this channel because it will help more people see the video and I've got plenty more DIY and concrete content coming for you in the future. So guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.